What is up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tattoo Critiques. I'm Pony Lawson and what we like to do here on this show is talk about your tattoos. Whether they're good, bad, or ugly, we like to talk about them all. This week we're giving a nod to all the collectors out there and the tattoos that they love so much that I'm going to shit on. Or maybe you'll get lucky and be my favorite tattoo of the week. But you'll have to wait to the end of the video to find out. Let's not waste any more time and get right into it. The first tattoo is sent in from Corey Boone, and Corey sent in this eagle trash polka style tattoo that I absolutely love to see because we haven't got to see many trash polka style tattoos on this series. Trash polka tattoos are generally a style of tattooing that involves a lot of high contrast, bold imagery that involves a lot of black and red. You can mix a lot of realism, surrealism, along with some heavy graphic design. I for one am not a huge fan of trash polka, but I can appreciate the work that goes into it. So Corey sent in this little eagle with a with a compass on top, and and again I think this tattoo is applied very well. When I zoom in and I look at the needle marks and things like that, I can tell that this tattoo is done by somebody who knows what they're doing. However, there are a couple things that I do want to talk about. Normally, if we were to tattoo this eagle uh, in a realistic fashion, we wouldn't be doing those very harsh black shadows throughout the eagle. But being trash polka, you can get away with a lot, especially when it comes to that dark, high contrast black shading that you have in the eagle. I'm not a huge fan of the little spots that you have on the back side of the eagle where they're kind of just little dots hanging out in the middle of nowhere. The same thing with the front of the eagle's face as well. There's just a couple of little spots that I feel like are maybe out of place. Uh, but again, it's not that bad. You can get away with a lot with this style. I would have liked to seen some thicker lines introduced to the bottom of this tattoo. And what I mean by that is you've got all these smaller, thinner lines on the bottom of the eagle. If you were to take one of those lines and beef it up about a half inch thick or so, I think that would have really showed some control through this tattoo and variation in line weight as well. I do like the red square that you have at the bottom of this tattoo, how it kind of looks very solid on the right and kind of looks like a paint stroke near the left, how you kind of let those needles drag on through. I do wish that the top and bottom line were a bit more faint, uh, you know, just to where you didn't see it as much. But overall, I do like that effect, and I think it's a very cool trick. I'm thankful that you did send this tattoo over, as we don't get to see a lot of trash polka on this series. But there are a couple things that I would have worked on, some lines I would have straightened out, the little graphic dots, things here and there. But I do think you get away with a lot. I think that may be why a lot of people aren't a huge fan of this style, because you can get away with so much. You can always just resort back to saying like, oh, I meant to do that, and it works. But again, overall, very cool, bold tattoo, and thank you for sending that in. So the next tattoo is sent in by a sweet child of mine, Max K from Germany. Oh, sweet child of mine. <laughs> and Max, you sent in this Slash from Guns N' Roses tattoo. And I know it's Slash because of the little circles on his hat. It's a dead giveaway. And his glasses. Slash never seems to change style. Doesn't like to wash his clothes, apparently. The one thing that sticks out to me right away is the shadow that the artist placed around the glasses. It looks very dark and almost tribal tattoo-esque. If you look just under the left eye, you see kind of like these black spikes. Uh, just very reminiscent of a tribal tattoo. And I have a feeling it was just meant to be like a shadow. It's just not reading that way. Other parts of the tattoo I like a lot. The hair and things like that. I like all the little hairlines that are running through this. Uh, and I'm even a fan of the roses, although they could use a little bit of work. They're not bad. I do wish some heavier blacks were used in this tattoo through the hat and the brim of the hat, as well as the roses. It just seems like the black shades aren't super strong in this tattoo. If we were to bring our eyes over to this rose over here, it just seems like you're kind of missing the deeper reds or black shading. What's sitting there now just kind of seems like a patchy, darker red shade and not so much a shade to help bring out the brighter tones of that rose. I think if we were to introduce a little bit of black into those darker reds that you have in that rose that's just to the left of the hat, you would really help bring out the brightness of the reds that you have in there as well. I also think it would look great to have a thicker line weight on these roses as well to complement the small ones that are already there. Uh, but overall, very cool tattoo to show your love for Slash. And thank you for sending that in. Thanks a lot, Max. Huh? <laughs> Next tattoo is sent in by Will from Arkansas. And Will, you sent in this very cool tattoo of a hand and match. Uh, it's a very interesting style. Again, this isn't a style that we get to see a whole lot of on the series, so I appreciate you for sending it in. It kind of has a very thread-like feel to me, or a ribbon almost. And there's a lot of interesting concepts and parts to it as well. So I do like this tattoo. I think it's very original. You know, it's something that you don't get to see every day. And the line work itself is very cool. The artist 
had good control in giving you shape to the hand. You know, uh, you can clearly tell that, you know, this is a hand, it's a thumb, the meaty part of the hand. All these curves are sitting right where they need to go. And the contrast that you have from the line work that you have in the hand to the dots that you have in the circle above work really well together. And I love the way that this little burnt matchstick looks. I don't think it's overly done with the stipple that you have in the hand. Again, it's nice to see the contrast that you have in this tattoo. And it's happening a lot, you know, the, like I said, the lines compared to the dots and also the amount uh, of shading that's in there as well. You have a whole lot of shading up in the top, whereas not so much in the bottom. So uh, again, there's just a lot of contrast going on in this tattoo, a lot more than uh, you would see at first glance. I know I've seen this style of tattoo a few other times on the internet as of lately. If you guys happen to know the style of this work, let me know in the comments below. Thank you, Will, for sending that in. I appreciate it. Next up is a tattoo sent in from Rachel Grunert. Uh, Rachel, you sent in a picture of your leg sleeve that you've been working on. The top picture you said was healed from 2017 and the bottom two are a little newer. I really do like the way that this tattoo healed up on the top. Everything has settled in and is living very nicely. I absolutely love the houses that you have in the back of this photo that are just barely there, they're barely faint, but man, it looks so cool. I love this photo at the top. As we travel down, we get to the middle car that says uh, Daddy's Girl, Sue, Marissa, and Rachel. I'm assuming these are your sisters as your name is Rachel. And again, I, I think uh, this tattoo tattoo is just as phenomenal as the one that is on top. Obviously, they're all done by the same artist. Just a little bit of time has passed in between each one of these. And then the bottom one, and I'm assuming that is your father on the outside of the car. In this, it looks like to be like a torn picture of some sort. And you could tell there's some sort of scratch or something going through these two photos here at the bottom. I love the little scratches and, uh, and the pieces missing of the photos. It really helps sell the believability of these and helps it feel like a real photo. The lure at the bottom is a nice touch along with the photos and uh, so is the Bel Air logo itself. I I like the way that the white is placed inside of this Bel Air logo. It really makes it feel shiny. I'm not sure why the edges or corners of the photos uh, haven't been tattooed in. I'm assuming it's because of something else is gonna go over those. Uh, I'm just very curious. As you see on the middle photo, the top left is missing, and on the bottom photo, uh, the right side of the photo is missing. Again, I'm assuming something else is gonna be planted in there. Uh, it's just something that the artist probably did to leave room for something in the future. So again, very cool work, Rachel. There's really nothing negative for me to say about these tattoos. I love them. I love the way they healed, settled, and I, uh, we're seeing a tattoo that is healed for uh, about four years now or so. So we can tell these are gonna stand the test of time. So thank you very much, Rachel, for sending those in. Great work. Next tattoo is sent in by Rick Bailey. Rick Bailey, you sent in this very colorful tattoo. I feel like I should know what this is from, but I just don't. I apologize. Uh, however, the artistry in this tattoo is superb. Five minutes later. So we did reference our in-house anime specialist, and this is from Demon Slayer. Yay! Very cool artwork. I don't know if there's gonna be a lot that I could say as far as uh, constructive criticism goes, because I do think this thing has all the bells and whistles. It's got very nice line weight. It's got very nice shading. It's got a dragon. The glowing of the dragon is very cool. The, the little neon effect that it has. Even the white ink that is in this tattoo, and white ink is very difficult to apply, is done very well. And I love that little booty in the back too. <laughs> I love these booties. Hey girl, hey. You would. <laughs> like, you, you, how do you haven't even seen it? <laughs> There's Lady who? Sonade. Sonade. Lady Sonade's booty, though. I, I'm, I'm trying to find some things to add or implement into this tattoo, but honestly, like, I, I would leave it just the way it is. I think everything in here uh, has its own place, and there's nothing that feels out of place. Excellent work on the artist. So thank you very much, Rick, for sending that in. Which brings us to the end of the critiques for this week. But before we go, you know we gotta talk about my favorite tattoo of the episode, which was sent in by Rachel. Rachel, this tattoo's got it all, and I really feel like the artist is doing a superior job in handling this project. Just for the simple fact that I know these bottom tattoos are gonna heal just like that top one and have that really authentic vintage feel to it. And once they're all healed and settled in, I have a feeling they're going to look exactly like the reference images that you sent the artist to begin with. So thank you again, Rachel, for sending those in. More wait! Before you guys go, I want to talk to you about my featured artist of the week, which is Dale Winters. Dale Winters is somebody I've been following for a little bit of time now, 
and his artwork is so cool. He usually hand draws all of his own tattoos and they're not your typical designs. He does a lot of unique spins on video game characters. Uh, he also does like Simpsons and Star Wars tattoos as well. Sometimes he'll implement mice, uh, you know, playing the main character of a video game. You can tell he has a very unique style all of his own, but he does carry a lot of that Asian influence in his work as well. So please go check out his page at uh, Dale Winters Tattoos on Instagram and let him know what you think. So don't forget guys, if you wanna see your tattoo on a future episode, send it to ponycritiques at gmail.com and hopefully we'll get to it. But for now, like, subscribe, share this video with your pals and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we put up the next video. All right, see y'all next week.